Hey guys, it's Laura Lee, and I am sorry that um, my promised videos for yesterday did not get put out. I was supposed to do this Ruby video and um, RVB, um, but I was very ill yesterday and I'm, I'm still getting over it a bit, um, so I hope you understand. Um, so yeah, here's my Ruby ramble. <laughs> It's gonna be a little long. I hope you guys don't mind. Um, I got into Ruby after my sister really bullied me into it. I have been watching Rooster Teeth for a while, um, specifically Achievement Hunter, because um, I love gaming videos, and I used to watch PewDiePie all the time until like he got just a bit juvenile for me, and. I loved his um, Worms Let's Plays, and I'm like, I'm so, I was like, I, why did he only put out like, you know, three Let's Plays of Worms? Um, so I started looking for more, and that was my first Rooster Teeth affiliated video, was the Achievement Hunters playing Worms, and I was hooked on Achievement Hunter from there on. I also watched sporadically like RT Life, shorts, other stuff, um, but I didn't really get into it until my sister was like, hey, did you know Rooster Teeth made this anime? You need to watch this anime. Um, and I was like, because eh, I have a feeling I'm going to get backlash for this, but I've never really been into anime at all. Um, I have, I have reasons. Um, one, I'm an, I'm an artist myself and just the art style and the animation style of anime has never been particularly appealing to me. Um, but also... I feel like there's a lot of over-sexualization of women and girls in anime that is very problematic to um, our current culture in general, and I don't condone that. Um, so I was like, anime, not my thing. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Um, I watched the trailers and they seem pretty cool and I watched like the first few episodes of volume one and I was just like you know I just don't think I can I can get into this and then it was like a few months later that my sister was like you need you have to watch Ruby so I made myself sit down and watch Ruby and I was fucking hooked. <laughs> I watched every single video multiple times. I and then I watched every reaction I could find on it. Um and that's kind of how I got into reacting was because I was watching so many reactions because I'd never felt like this sort of sense of community or of like this world that I could be so obsessed with since Harry Potter and I never thought I'd feel that way again um but I do feel that way with Ruby and that's why every day I thank God for Monty and everything he created um But yeah, so I got extremely hooked into Ruby. Um, the last several episodes of Volume 3, I was actually caught up on and watched them as they came out. And it, it was like a Saturday ritual for me and my sister. It was like, she'd run in my room, jump on my bed, I'd open my laptop, and it was Ruby time. 
and like from episode eight onward is a mess like if you thought I, I I've cried in previous videos you have no idea how much I cried <laughs> at those episodes I yeah it was bad um the last episode me and my sister actually like just sat on my bed crying for like an hour <laughs> after the episode was over and then my mom was like what are you guys doing and we were like we're emotionally traumatized leave us alone um and i ended up watching the episode like 12 more times that day and just feeling my heart like rip into shreds um so i'm very invested <laughs> it's basically what the past six minutes of this video has been saying um i'm also i i I think I actually love Ruby more than Harry Potter, which is a big thing to say for me. Um, cause like before it used to be all Harry Potter all the time merch for me. Um, posters, memorabilia, wands, cloaks, everything. Um, but now it's been Ruby. I, I have my posters, I have my, um, Ruby theater poster that I got when me and my sister went to see volume one in theaters. Um, I also have my Red Light Roses poster, but most significantly, I think, for me, is um, I had the chance to strip down and repaint my dresser I've had since I was like three. Uh, over this last summer and I I repainted it in ruby I repainted it in ruby everything every symbol I could um, come up with so far I know there are more and I'm adding I'm going to add them on as I go I also am adding um, symbols from other fandoms but um, yeah it's mainly ruby <laughs> and I love it. It's a staple. You can never see it in my videos, but it makes me happy every time I look at it, and that's that's how I decorate. Um, this is a bit of a tangent, and I know you guys are like, we'll get to volume four, get to volume four. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know as we go into volume four, and you'll actually get to see my reactions to Ruby itself. Um, really what I think about Ruby because, I mean, I could go back and watch through all of them and tell you what I think of everything, but I feel like that's not a fun thing to watch. Um, so yeah, my favorite characters. Let's start there. Um... My favorite character is Blake. She's the one I most like, even though I'm a dog person, so it's kind of ironic. Um, but I'm shy, I'm quiet, I'm bookish, I love to stay on my own, and damn it, if there's a fight, I run away the first chance I get. And. I don't know, something about Blake just really speaks to me. I'm actually um, planning a Blake cosplay now and have some of the pieces worked out, um, which I'm hoping to wear to RTX if I'm able to go this next summer. Um, one of my other favorite characters is, of course, Nora. <laughs> Nora. <laughs> I mean, there's not much else to say. Nora's amazing. I love Nora. Um, 
And if I had to do a top three of favorite characters, the last one would be Crow. Because I don't know why, but I think I start I think it started with um Hiccup and How to Train Your Dragon too. I I can feel attracted to animated characters and I am very attracted to Crow. He's like Oh, he's hot. Um I also have um lots of ships for Ruby. Um some might not be what you expect. Some are like, well, duh. Like, I shipped Arcos until it sailed and sank immediately <laughs> in Volume 3, Episode 12. Um, I, I ship Renora like nothing else. Renora better happen if not Volume 4, Volume 5. It, it needs to happen soon. We, we need love that like actually lasts and happens and damn it survives <laughs> oh gosh um i also ship weiss and neptune um and i'm gonna get backlash for this but i do not ship bumblebee because I ship Black Sun so hard, it hurts my heart. <laughs> um, cause I'm all for character foils, um, and <sighs> I'm all for character foils and Sun and Blake just play off of each other so well, like they're so different. Like, that's how it used to be with Yang and Blake, but now that Yang's kind of confronting her own demons, they're just too similar, and I don't enjoy it. Also, on the subject of foils, a ship that no one I've talked to has been able to understand is I ship Yang and Mercury. There it is. <laughs> Because, like, if you just look at both of their characters, they're perfect dramatic foils for each other. They're... There's the hero, there's the villain. Um, I don't know. Just... Just something about them. If Mercury wasn't such a prick, I feel like he and Yang would be amazing. Um, for some of the older students, I happen to, not students, but characters, um, for some of the older characters, I happen to ship Crow and Winter, because if no one else saw sexual tension in that episode, I don't know what you're seeing. <laughs> We must have been watching totally different, totally different episodes. Um, also, I ship Glinda and Ironwood. Because I feel like... Oh no, I'm, I'm just now showing um, Ruby to my roommate. And every time they come on screen together, she's like, Okay, they just came from having sex, didn't they? <laughs> Because it's it's so true. They they have sexual tension. It seems like they have like an amazing love hate relationship, and they're both great characters. And yeah. So really, I guess that's how up to speed I can get on how I am with Ruby. Um, oh, wait, Neo and Tortrick. I ship them so hard. 
now that Tortrix's gone, like, Neo s scares the crap out of me. Because we know she had to survive that fall. She had her umbrella. She just, like, floated down. She is going to be, like, the most terrifying character. I guarantee it. And... But yeah, that's that's about how up to date I can get you guys on how I feel about Ruby and what my thoughts are on Ruby. Um, if you guys have any more questions, just shoot them to the comments. I will answer them, I swear. Literally, I have no social life. You guys are my social life. Um, so let's get to volume four. Um, I had a couple people ask me what I thought about the volume four character designs. Um, just starting out with Team Ruby. Um, Ruby, Ruby's outfit, I love it. It shows that she's grown, that she's older, that she's been on the road, that she's been seeing some tough times. Um, I was a bit worried when I first saw the design because I thought, you know, with the shorter skirt and the, well, she never really had a neckline to begin with. She, she was always like, had the turtleneck dress. Um, but just like that cut for the cleavage, um, made me concerned that they were going to over-sexualize her character, even though she's only 16. And I take problems with that, but I... There's also the counter-argument of, like, if you think of, like, school dress codes and stuff, like, oh, you shouldn't show your shoulders, or you should wear skirts this length. And I don't agree with those, so... um. I think I'm pretty okay with Ruby's outfit and it looks kick-ass and she is kick-ass and I love how she's adopted um, Summer's style of cloak. Um, another thing I noticed with um, Ruby's character design is, and with a couple other characters is that she seems to be paying tribute to um, characters that we lost in previous volume. Um, because just looking at this design with the narrower skirt and the, um, stockings that come up to almost skirt level, and I just can't help but think of Penny. It reminds me of Penny's style so much and I feel like the loss of Penny really hit Ruby hard so that makes sense to me but moving on to Weiss Weiss looks absolutely freaking gorgeous um her design hasn't changed too much Except, um, she's got tighter sleeves, different, she's got heels instead of boots. Um, the main, like, difference I can see in her appearance is something that I think could be, possibly, be a tribute to Pyrrha. Because we all know Weiss admired Pyrrha, and... We don't know how she felt when Pierre died, um, but her hair, which used to be in that awesome side ponytail, is now in a very high back ponytail like Pierre's used to be. And just looking at it, it looks like they just copied the design from Pira. And also her, 
her uh, sapphire accents with the her little neck collar that also reminds me of Pira, as do the teardrop earrings. And ah, I'm getting sad and mushy. Basically, she looks absolutely fabulous. And yeah, it's probably my favorite of the new character designs, honestly. Like, why is this my favorite character? But the, her design is like the best. Um, Blake's design is boss. I love the new top. I love, I love, I freaking love the trench coat. Um, the thigh high boots, I'm a little on the fence about, but eh. Um, she's still absolutely boss. There's not too much I can say because I feel like, I feel like she's just switched out her huntress outfit for, kind of like Ruby, for, you know, her own crusading outfit. Um, yeah. Now Yang, we've got two different character designs for. There was the character design they released. Um, right after RTX, which was shown in the um, character short as well, which has her wearing cargo pants, a uh, jacket knotted on her uh, right arm, and an orange tank top, which my sister wants to cosplay Yang and like. She was like, oh, I can do the new cosplay um, because it's it's so much easier. And I'm like, no, you're not backing out of this. We're doing OG Beacon style cosplay. Um, she was trying to chicken out on me. But yeah, I def definitely think this shows Yang's vulnerability and all that. But then the character design that we got released just before the short where it shows her in a like amber colored trench coat very similar to Blake's. She's got her gauntlet back on her one arm and a metal cap on her other. Which kind of hints to me that maybe she's going to try and go with just the one arm after a while, which that is awesome. I think that it'd be like a great inspiration for amputees and stuff like that. Um, for them to co be able to cosplay a character who's, you know, badass and, you know, has the same problems that they do. Um, but I also feel like she needs a robotic arm. I feel like it could happen. I feel like it should happen. I just don't know that it's going to happen this volume. Yeah, and that's about it for um, character designs. Um, as for volume 4 predictions or what I want to happen, um, Team Ranger, if anyone calls them Team Orange, I swear. Ranger. Um, see, Ruby, they're all four of them. They are on their own crusade to find and stop Cinder, Emerald, and Mercury. And they're heading to Haven, which is, um, as we know, the um, school in Mistral, where Sun and his team are, as well as, um, team, 
feel like I'm going to get this mixed up. Team Auburn, I believe, was the one that um, Team Ruby fought in the first, um, first battle of Volume 3. Um, which, by the way, I'm also doing a Reese Chloris cosplay. Which, badass. Um... I'm hoping that they'll be able to meet up with Sun and his team and some of the characters we know. I'm hoping that they'll get to Haven this volume and that that will happen. Um, because I feel like they could use some more friends. Though even if this season is just a season of them adventuring and taking down Grimm and saving other people, that'd be amazing. Um, Weiss, I feel like... This volume, since they said it was going to be, like, basically their own separate journeys, this volume, I feel like she's going to have to learn how to get out from under her father's control, have to learn how to be her own person, which we saw that she was already learning how to do in volume three, but I think she needs to do so even more. Um, also with her back in Atlas, I'm hoping to receive, I'm hoping to see a return of Team Funky, just because one, they're awesome, and two, I think Weiss has some pretty great allies in them if she wants to escape or whatever it is and get back to Team Ruby. Um, Blake, Blake is a toughie. I know she's on the run. She's trying to escape her, everyone that she knows and loves, because that's what Adam said. He said he was going to destroy everything she loved. And that's why she ran at the end of volume four. I know... I've seen a lot of reactions where people are like, well, why did she run? Because the line he just said to her, I'll make it my mission to destroy everything that you love. Um, and that hurts, but I also feel, this may just be my own prediction, but I feel like she is going to go after Adam. I feel like she needs to have that confrontation, that fight, that she needs to stand up for herself. Um, but in doing so, in um, episode 7 of um, volume 3, Adam said when they were going to look for Blake. Adam said, forget it. I should head back to Mistral. So he is obviously based in Mistral. He wants to head back there. Which is also the place that Ruby and Jean and Nora and Ren are going. Um, so I'm hoping that Blake, Blake at least, is able to meet up with Ruby at this this volume and sun because you know my preferences um yang yang yang's got her own mental journey ahead of her she's got to learn how to deal with the situation she is now, which I think we saw a little bit at the end of the um, character short, where she like looked very determined. I don't know if anyone else got that impression. But she looked very determined, ready to take on the world. And um, obviously she does, considering the character design they put out. Um, but 
I also think that her journey, this, this volume is going to be going after her mother. Because they heavily pushed that in volume three, that she was going to find her mother, that she was going to have Crow help her track down her mother. Um, I don't know if it's the wisest decision, but I think it's something that she needs to do for herself. Um, and Raven is such an enigma. Um, my own personal theories is that Raven is either a maiden, and that's why she's trying to stay out of the public eye or whatever, and is basically hiding. Either that, or, and more likely, based on some of the animations we've seen and how Raven has acted towards others and how she said that and how Crow said that like she gave him a tip on his latest assignment which was um you know Cinder and everything I think she could be working undercover for Salem Which, by the way, the whole, the whole fan theory of Summer is Salem is bullshit because, <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now, because at the very end of the last episode of Volume 3, um, she says, so when you send out your smaller soul, know that you sent her the same pitiful demise. And I think that is what happened to Summer. Ozpin sent her to go fight Salem, and that's how Summer died. That's the same pitiful demise where that's coming in. Also, why would Summer be Salem? Obviously they've been fighting Salem a lot, a lot longer than um, Summer's been gone, so. Anyway, so yeah, that's my predictions and theories for Volume 4. So yesterday, in the mail, I received my Ruby Volumes 1 through 3 Beacon Steelbook. And I'm just telling you guys, this is amazing. It has, like, usually when Blu-rays come with covers, I'm just like, forget about it, toss it out the window. But this is like a really beautiful cover that works with the steelbook itself. And the steelbook itself is gorgeous and like, damn near indestructible. And it's got the character designs from uh, Volume 1's poster. If you open it up, I've got the three discs. Volume 1, Volume 2, and Volume 3. And I'm just so excited for this. It comes with behind the scenes featurettes and audio commentaries, which I think the audio commentaries I'm most excited for. When the last episode of volume three came out, I watched the hype stream that they had the day before and where they watched through um, volume three and talked about it um and like that was just so fascinating to me I still like someone put it on YouTube so I still keep going and re-watching it and so I'm probably gonna spend a good portion of my free time this week just watching all of the different audio commentaries for all the different volumes um 
But yeah, I guess that's it for Ruby. I know this video is really long. Um, I just have one more thing, because if you've been watching this long, you're probably a decently dedicated follower and or subscriber and like I love you for it um, and you may know that I mentioned in previous videos that I'm going to Comic Con soon um, I'll go ahead and just say where I'm going to Tulsa Wizard World Comic Con um, and I'm going all three days and that's why I'm going to be reacting to uh, the very first episode of volume four dressed as River Tam from Firefly and Serenity and covered in fake blood is because I will have just gotten back from Comic Con and I'll be sitting down and making that reaction. So I was wondering if anyone would be interested in seeing me. I, it seems like such a sellout move for YouTubers, but then again, here I am, a reactor on YouTube, which is, I don't know. Would it be a sellout? Or would you guys want to see me vlog my days at Comic-Con? Because some crazy shit goes on at Comic Con and it's like boatloads of fun and you know I'm all things nerd so if you want to see that just let me know and I will do so I may do so anyway just you know for shits and giggles um but yeah if you've watched this long through this now almost 40 minute video I I thank you so much and I hope to see you guys in the next video. I love you all. Bye.